All right, good morning and welcome. Uh, my name is George Ripsack. I'm director of the Odyssey Coordinating Center at Columbia and a professor there, and I'm going to talk about the state of the community. So welcome to Odyssey 2023. Uh, thank you for coming to this new venue. We appreciate their work working with us to get this rolling. Um, I want to do a few thank yous to begin. First, I want to thank the FDA for their generous support of this conference through a conference grant. I want to thank our sponsors for this year, Odysseus, Beringer, Engelheim, Gilead, and Johnson & Johnson. Uh, but this is a community. Let me start off by uh, uh, thanking an important component of our community, the Scientific uh, Review Committee. Uh, would you guys please stand if you're on the Scientific Review Committee? It's a lot of work reviewing the abstracts and turning this into a scientific conference, so we really appreciate that. Also, uh, all the people that made today happen, the, uh, putting this program together, I, if these people would stand also, everyone who made it happen today. Um, I'm going to be giving the state of the community. You should have received or could have picked up our, our journey book. I just want to highlight Craig Saxon right here who did the, most of the work of putting that together. Thank you, Craig. <laughs> now, depending on how you count, uh, we're coming up on our 10th birthday. This is our ninth symposium, but it's soon to be our 10th birthday. Our, our birthday could be November 6th, which is the day that the name was announced by Patrick Ryan. Uh, thank you, Patrick. And December 16th is the day it became a legal entity by the Coordinating Center being um, created. Odyssey's mission, which we always reiterate, is to improve health by empowering a community to collaboratively generate the evidence that promotes better health decisions and better care. Our values are innovation, reproducibility, community, collaboration, openness, and beneficence. Uh, here's how Odyssey works. The community comes together. I'm going to go through this one quickly, not a little piece at a time, but our community creates data standards, um, uh, tools, methods, and clinical designs. We create network studies, which are then shared across our large data network. Our data collaborators voluntarily run the study, send it back. Uh, to be aggregated where we collaboratively interpret the evidence and publish it together. And we have many authors on our papers because of that. Here are our collaborators. There are now almost 4,000 members in our team's environment from 83 countries. So that's uh, 10 years, that's pretty good. We're around the world and we thank our regional chapters uh, who um, address problems specific to their geographic location. Let me highlight Eden uh, for their success in Europe, the European chapter in Eden, in building the Odyssey community across Europe, and you see the European national nodes. The backbone of Odyssey is, lies in the work groups. That's where we do all our work. I want to thank all the work group leads pictured here for pulling forward Odyssey uh, forward on our mission. Here's our common data model, a new slide that shows the entity relationship diagram, uh, version 5.4, which is, as you'll see in a moment, used around the world. Our vocabularies are up to 11 million concepts with 80 million concept relationships. In the past year, uh, we've been working on improving our vocabularies with the Vocabulary Improvement Initiative. We did a landscape assessment, if you remember. We created a vocabulary committee that works closely with the vocabulary team. Um, thank you, Anna Astropolitz, for uh, uh, putting, being a large part of that effort, and we'll hear from Alexander in a moment. Um, we did a release schedule and a roadmap so that you know what's going on with the vocabulary and when new things are coming. We are uh, facilitating the community to contribute to the vocabulary and a quality framework and documentation, and you'll hear more about this at Alexander's talk. <clears throat> Here's who's using the OMOP common data model around the world, the map. Over 500 data sources, now up to 956 million unique patients 
who have their records converted to the OMOP common data model or 12% of the world's population. A subset of that uh, could participate in Odyssey studies, we're calling the Odyssey Evidence Network. Thank you, Claire Blackader, for uh, leading that effort. Um, you need to, first of all, want to be named as an Odyssey in the Odyssey Network. You need to contribute back details about your database so people can decide whether the study is relevant to your database. And then you have to actually run uh, Odyssey studies. And Claire will be talking more about that in a bit. Hades is a set of open source R packages for large scale analytics. So this is like all the source code that we use to carry out our studies and do our conversions. Pictured here are uh, leads in the open source community. I want to thank them too. Our eight Hades packages have been downloaded over half a million times. So that's a big number. We'll hear more about that in Katie's talk. Odyssey Scholarship, now over 600 publications and 12,000 citations. <clears throat> Here's the social network diagram of our work. Uh, you'll notice how it changed. In the past, what I would do is walk through the diagram and show how different nodes were working on different things. Now there's just one big node in the middle. So what it means is we've matured over these 10 years uh, into a coherent um, initiative. Uh, we carried out uh, the Save Our Sisyphus challenge this year, um, working on specific problems, both working on those problems to get them done and also bringing the community more familiar with how we carry that out. We did four studies, two that we worked on week by week and two that we worked on asynchronously asynchronously, and we're going to be hearing more of that, about that in our panel with Cindy, Chan, Anthony, and Mark. And we held our symposia this past year. This symposium, the last year's symposium held in Bethesda was the global symposium, and then last year's APAC, Asia Pacific, was held in Taiwan, and then this year's Europe was held in Rotterdam, and this year's APAC was held in Sydney. And at the end, you'll be hearing from Peter and Mornin about the 2024 European and APAC Symposia. Uh, pointing out the other thing we accomplished was creating a Master of Science at Northeastern University. So look into that, real world evidence in healthcare and life sciences. Uh, I just want to point out for those, many of our attendees are new to Odyssey. So how can you become involved? The most important single thing you can do is probably join our Tuesday call. In fact, um, the call on October 17th, uh, October 24th, is Welcome to Odyssey. So that is when you can come in and uh, join the community. It's 11 a.m. Eastern time, and it's around the world, so correct as you need. Um, we had another success this past year, and that is predicting a clinical trial. I'll go into a little bit more detail on that one. So this is a slide showing our process for generating reliable evidence. I see Odyssey as an evidence. It's not a, a data model initiative. You know, it's not a methods initiative. It's an evidence generation initiative. And so one of the most important things we do is try to generate reliable evidence. And this is our framework for that. Large-scale evidence generation evaluation across a network of databases, or LEGEND, headed by Martin Schumi, um, is how we uh, uh, carry out that. Published in Jamia, he created 10 commandments of producing reliable evidence. I won't read them, but they can be summarized in two uh, shorter commandments, which is verification and openness. So one, uh, you need diagnostics at every step of the way. You can't just say that, well, I'm really good at this and I've done this a lot before and I thought really hard about it. You have to demonstrate that you did it at every step in the process. And openness, you have to say what you did, what you're planning on doing in your protocol, your source code should be open so people can repeat it, and share your diagnostics and results. And in these two ways, I think we can produce much more reliable observational evidence. We applied this, if you recall, if you were here in 2018 to the US 2017 a hypertension treatment guideline. We carried out that study. Uh, you know, that guideline, which is supposedly evidence-based, is mostly expert opinion. There are only 40 trials, and that circle on the far left 
is showing that for all the drugs, those few arcs there are the randomized trials. So most of the conclusions about those drugs were expert opinion. Odyssey came along, did half a million studies, and filled in that circle, which is that second one. Uh, to test our reliability, we said, well, of our half million studies, 30 of them exactly overlapped those previous randomized trials. Let's see how we did. We had the same answer on 28 out of 30. Uh, by chance, even if they're identical, the randomized trials and us, under that hypothesis, you expect to get two wrong, and that's what we got wrong. So by chance, we are actually duplicating randomized trials. Now, we showed that the guideline was very good, and we agreed with it almost completely, but there are just a couple of small places where we disagreed. One is that they said chlorothalidone, a diuretic, was better than hydrochlorothiazide. In the old days, hydrochlorothiazide was preferred because it didn't last the whole day and your kidneys could recover. And basically 95 or more percent of people on a diuretic take hydrochlorothiazide today. But physiologically, chlorothalidone lasts a little bit longer. It's also more potent, but you can always take a bigger pill of the other one. So the research community has favored chlorothalidone. All the randomized trials lately have been on chlorothalidone because it's become the preferred agent. And there was an indirect meta-analysis, which is an observational trial of RCT data, <clears throat> and it favored chlorothalidone. A more recent study from Canada, a big study, a nice study by Dalla, actually favored hydrochlorothiazide, say that it's just as effective and safer. That, that study got lambasted in the literature, and they requested in a letter published by the editor that the study be, that that person's funding be revoked for saying that hydrochlorothiazide was better than chlorothalidone. Um, what we would like is a randomized trial to com compare the two head to head. We can do almost as well where we, just, uh, where we start with hydrochlorothiazide patients and then randomize them to staying on that or moving to chlorothalidone, and that's exactly what was done. A trial in the VA started in 2016, proposed to end in 2022. We said about, we had done those half million studies. One of them was this exact comparison. So we published the results of that study. And that study agreed with Dalla, disagreed with the research community, said that hydrochlorothiazide was up. Well, let me, I'm going ahead of myself. Here's our diagnostics, which we passed completely. Here's our effectiveness results, saying the two drugs are equally effective but hydrochlorothiazide is way, way safer, not just hypokalemia, hyponatremia, renal failure, syncope, et cetera. So we published that, and guess what? We got letters in the literature, too, just like Dalla. And this one is by the person who wrote the guideline, the lead, and the head of the CDC at the time, saying, ignore our study. There's reasonably strong evidence that chlorothalidone is better. These are two guys who only listen to randomized trials, except they less listen to observational studies when they agree with them and said, but don't worry, there's a randomized trial coming. Just wait for that. That'll tell us the truth. Randomized trial comes out two years later, 2022. And look at that. It says they're equally effective, and, and there's highly statistically significant hypokalemia from chlorothalidone. They didn't find the renal failure we found, but we had 10 times as many patients. So that was published. Now, New England Journal put out, so, um, so first of all, the important point is that despite everyone being against us, we ran our study, we did it fairly, we didn't cheat in any way, and we disagreed with that and showed that the two are equal and ended up predicting the future randomized trial. And that's the main point of bringing that up today. And we need to do more of that, of uh, predicting these randomized trials. I'll just mention that the editorial in New England Journal came out, and you'll notice what it says is chlorothalidone is a great drug. So um, when we published our study, remember, the trial said that hydrochlorothiazide was preferred, but the editorial said, and therefore, we should take chlorothalidone. So it's hard to convince people when they're biased. And even when, you, when we publish a study and people don't listen to us, it means we're doing just as well as randomized trials. <laughs> <clears throat> we should take heart in that. So establishing the value of real world evidence is a reasonable vision. Uh, requires tr building trust across um, evidence generators and consumers and people and processes augmented with science, technology, engineering. We need large-scale evidence generation. I talk about it in my opening letter for the book and large-scale collaboration, which Patrick talks about in his closing letter for the book. Open science systems that promote transparency, openness, and verification will increase reliability. Uh, this weekend, we have a workshop, a full-day workshop without a competing track, uh, at least on the first day, on a characterization which addresses large-scale evidence generation and large-scale collaboration. And I hope we have this room. We hope everyone stays and participates 
in our large scale evidence generation uh, initiative. Um, Odyssey represents you know, many millions of dollars of volunteer time. A lot of it I see around this room. Uh, about a million dollars of that is cash that goes into paying for the infrastructure to support Odyssey. And so we continue to find ways to support that million dollar price tag. Uh, on our website is an opportunity to support the journey with gold sponsorship, silver sponsorship, and bronze sponsorship. Okay, now what we're gonna do is go through a series of talks uh, from the community, and then I'm gonna go through the agenda. Uh, first, Claire Blackater. Claire. Hi, good morning. Okay, I'm super excited to be here today to share with you uh, a little bit about our process this year in building out the Odyssey Evidence Network. But I'm going to sound a little bit like a broken record after what George just shared, but I think it's really important to always ground ourselves in why we are here and why we are doing what we're doing. And we are here to collaboratively generate evidence that promotes better health decisions and better care. Um, and I think, you know, I want you to remember that as you listen to the plenary today, you listen to the amazing science that Patrick and Martine and Anna are going to share with you, as you listen to the panels today, uh, as you walk around and look at the posters, really that's what we're all here to do. Um, and, I, and I'm sharing you some, some examples here um, of three times when we came together and we did just that. Um, and I think George just shared, shared a really compelling fourth example. And it's really exciting and we should be really proud of this as a community. Um, we, we are doing what we have set out to do. But, and I think all, all or almost all of these authors are here in this room today, and I think they would all tell you, yes, we are very proud of the, this work that we have accomplished together. But, network studies can be hard. And there are many reasons that they are hard, and we're going to learn a little bit more uh, later on today about our, our successes in that arena. But one of the reasons that they can be hard is right when you begin a network study. You're really excited, you've got a question, and you're like, I know if I can generate some evidence to answer this clinical question, and if I can get that evidence in the hands of a physician or a regulatory agency, they will be able to make a better decision for the patients that they serve. So you come to Odyssey, you say, Odyssey, I, I want to answer this question. What organizations are out there who have data that are willing to collaborate with me? And we say, well, I, we kind of know, we kind we kind of have an answer to that question, but you know, post on the forums, see see if you can some generate generate some interest in in what you want to do. So you post on the forum, and maybe a couple weeks go by, and you get some interest. You get some people who have data. They're like, yeah, we're behind you. We're really excited to do this. Then you say, well. Are these databases really the ones that are the best fit to answer this question? And, and the worst part is sometimes you may not be able to answer that until you've already run the study and you find out, well, this database didn't have the sample to support what we needed to do. Or this database didn't pass all the diagnostics. And they actually, you know, my study question included inpatient data, but half the databases that we're willing to collaborate don't cover inpatient data. And that's really hard when you get to that point. So we wanted to address that issue this year. And we know that regulatory agencies are thinking about this problem as well. Uh, in a guidance from FDA uh, detailing how we can use real-world evidence to support regulatory decision-making, they specifically call this out. And they say, evaluation of relevant data sources is an important step in the design of a study. And they go on further to say, when you are sharing a study protocol, you should show why you chose the data sources you chose to, to support the idea that they were not selected to actually favor particular study findings. And we know EMA is thinking about this. Earlier on uh, this summer at the Odyssey EU Symposium, there was an entire session detailing Darwin and Peter's going to talk a little bit about this later, but it's detailing Darwin and how they are attempting to solve this question of study feasibility in a federated network. So we wanted to take this call to action. We wanted to address that problem that we've seen around the community. We wanted to also learn from what others have done in the community like Eden. And so what we did this year is we set a goal for ourselves that we wanted to increase the transparency and maturity of the Odyssey Evidence Network. And the way we wanted to do that was you, know, as a federated open source community, that can be a little bit challenging. So our idea was 
all right, if we can collect just from every data, every data source uh, that has been converted to the CDM who's willing to collaborate with us, if we can collect a small set of aggregate summary statistics, things like number of persons, persons by gender, you know, persons by concept ID, types of visits you have, we can, we can bring that together, we call it a database profile, we can aggregate them together in one repository sitting over at Columbia, and then we can answer for any infinite number of clinical questions that are burning in all of your minds, which databases in the Odyssey network are best fit to address those questions. So we built that and we call it database diagnostics. And we're very excited about that as a community. But we needed a way to get it to the community. So on March 28, 2023, we kicked off the Save Our Sisyphus Challenge. And again, you're gonna hear a little bit more about this later. But it was ex it, very exciting and very ambitious where we attempted and succeeded to run four network studies simultaneously around the community. And we said, great, anybody who wants to collaboratively generate this evidence with us, we would like you to actually, before you even think about running the study, we want you to send us your database profile. You send us that database profile, we're gonna put it together in, in a repository uh, sitting on, on a server at the Odyssey Coordinating Center. And we're gonna tell you which, data, uh, which of your databases are the best to uh, answer these four clinical questions. And we did it. Um, I think I was maybe more surprised than anybody, but I'm very excited and we did it. Um, so as you can see here, these are our results across the top. A, B, C, and D are our studies one, two, three, and four. Um, down the side are the databases, just a subset of them uh, that were participants in the SOS challenge. And you can see here, uh, this is uh, telling us which studies each of those databases uh, should be participating in, which they are best fit uh, to answer. So I'm not going to go into the details here, but meet me at my poster later and I can tell you a little bit more about how this works. Um, but I'm very, very excited and I'm very honored to share with you the 36 members of our inaugural Odyssey Evidence Network. So I'd like to give them all a round of applause. So. I'm very, very proud of what we have done. And I think this is just the first step in, in continuing to generate evidence at scale uh, to help the patients that we serve. But here's my ask of you. I want you to take a look at this list and I want you to look for your organization and your database. Later on in the year in September, we put out a survey to the community to try to identify those databases around the world that have been converted to the CDM. Not necessarily members of this Odyssey network, but just who are using the CDM. There are 534 databases that we know of around the world currently using our standard. That means there are 498 databases we could be using to generate the evidence to support patients. So if your organization and database is not on this list, I want you to look on your table and you will see a card. Thank you, Craig. Craig is holding it up. <laughs> on that card is a QR code. If you scan that QR code, it will take you to a survey. It's a very short six question survey about you and your database. It asks you your name, your contact information, the name of your database, where you are from, how many patients are in that database, and the very final question is, will you join the Odyssey Evidence Network? And I hope you say yes, because as Patrick put, put it at his final talk last year, you might have missed it because you were playing with Lego, but he put it, he said, together we can achieve much more than we can achieve on our own. And together we are shaping the future of evidence-based healthcare. So I hope you will join the Evidence Network and join us on this journey. Thank you. Alex Davidoff. Alex? Alexander. How are you? <laughs> Thank you, George, for introduction. Let's talk about the vocabularies. 
I will start with a short introduction into the topic for those of you who are new to Odyssey. Odyssey standardized vocabularies is a central reference system that is, that is used in the common data model uh, for data standardization on the third content level. It happens during the ETL as well as across multiple applications uh, in Odyssey infrastructure. There is no content in any CDM table beside the nose table that is not a reference to the vocabularies. OMOP CDM only works when users apply central vocabularies to their data. This is an example of Rx norm concept from the very first OMOP vocabulary we ever did in 2009, even before Odyssey existed. It was a reference system for 19 vocabularies and half a million concepts included together with the mappings from the source coding systems, like undi like NDC in this example is mapped to Rx norm concept. The vocabularies are created based on the certain principles that we also call requirements and use as the dogmas. Here are the principles. This is important. It's not boring. This is important because sometimes... <laughs> sometimes we have to make tough decisions. Uh, we allow one and only one standard concept for each medical entity. We record only positive facts that really happened. The system is harmonized through assigned domains according to clinical categories. Comprehensive coverage of entities within each of the domains is a must. Standardization of the concept is achieved through mappings of commonly used coding system to the terminology that is chosen to be a standard. We build comprehensive and complex hierarchies that organize standard concepts into a single ontology. The model should be computationally efficient because we run it on the large scale databases. And the systems should stay easy to implement. It may seem boring, but this is important. This is how OMOP CDM works. This is what methods expects from the data. And this, this is what they get. The reason it works this way is pretty obvious. We build a standard model. The standard model is the result of many compromises put into a set of the res uh, conventions and rules. But we do it with a certain reason, to serve the main purpose of the observational research in supporting the scientific uh, use case, which drives the requirements. This is how we make the vocabularies, generation, and how we deliver them, dissemination. So basically we build and we disseminate. And build means that we add, we refresh the existing ones, and we fix them. Also, we could author de novo vocabularies, but we don't do this really often. Dissemination is organized through the releases to Athena, which now happen twice a year according to the roadmap. Now let's see how all these developed. Can you see the same uh, alter external concept from 2009? It hasn't changed at all. Can you believe it? The concept ID is still the same. This is almost a miracle. <laughs> the resource was put in place in 2009 and is still going strong. This is one of the foundation of the Odyssey community. And it's still valid and it still works. We've also grown up in numbers as well. The vocabularies became 16 times bigger in size. There are 80 more uh, times more relationships. Athena responds to 60,000 requests per day and produces around 60 or 50 vocabulary bundles per day. Odyssey vocabularies are used in more than 500 databases, as Claire mentioned, but 
these ones, the, the ones that we know, there might be even more database that we don't know about. Do you understand how this is important? By far, Odyssey vocabularies is the most popular Odyssey resource. But what has really changed since 2009 is the complexity of the system and the number of the use cases it serves. Look at our Rx norm guy. Now it has mappings from six source uh, terminology systems. Also, it's integrated into the hierarchy such as ATC and ETC. There are even more applications like indication vocabulary from first data uh, bank and the regimen vocabulary uh, and the regimens from the harmonic vocabulary. And this is just one Rx norm concept that sits on its own place in the hierarchy, in the hierarchy of other Rx norm concepts that have the same uh, hierarchy of the same level of complexity. But at the end of the day, it's a lot of work. The, the more we add, uh, the larger the work becomes. And if you add, we add burden for the refresh and for keeping it up. We get regular issues and forum posts, so the community is very active and has opinion and wants to change things, and sometimes they want to add some one small thing, and sometimes they want to add an entire vocabulary. This is what happens. The problem is that it's a lot, and it, and, and it adds to the overall size of the problem. And this is how it looks when you scale one level up. This is how we're solving the problem. There are three different things. First of all, we want to make sure that we do the right things to get the most out of the resources we have. So we put some effort into aligning with the community in different ways. We've done the landscape assessments. We've asking you, we ask you questions, and we will keep asking. Second is we make sure that we're focused. So we prioritize. And for that, we have a governance committee. You can see faces on the slide. This is to make sure that everything is, in, is transparent and the decisions are right. Third, we want to scale up. So one step is the community contribution that we recently introduced. By the way, where we are with the roadmap? In short, we've done a small spring release and then normal summer release and winter release is coming in February next year as planned according to the roadmap. The overhauls and improvement work for three main vocabularies from the condition domain are being prepared and you will get one big release February next year. So we build a community contribution and that is on the web. And this is good, but you have to engage. We may, we may do one or two small things ourselves just at the service, but overall we need you to take in. We need you to use this community contribution mechanism. We will make it easier over time, but please use a community contribution, fill out these forms. And if somebody is interested in doing something, please come and help the team. We need you to step up. We only have, we only have two friends. One is you and another one, ChatGPT. <laughs> the rest is the manual labor. <clears throat> this is the team. It's together only 5.5 uh, FTEs spread over 13 people. They are my heroes. And if you haven't yet realized, all three guys on the slides are the same person. <laughs> and it's really good that in the vocabulary system we have a strong mechanism to represent it properly. <laughs> Let's summarize. So the vocabularies have been and is the foundation of the com uh, community, even though you may not realize it every day. It's a life and kicking, but we need a little bit of your input and help. Thank you.
Thank you, Alexander. Next, we have uh, Katie Sadowski. Hi, good morning. Uh, today, I'm going to be giving an update on Odyssey's open source community. I wanted to start by saying some thank yous. First, to our open source software contributors. 111 community members contributed code to Odyssey software over the past year, which is pretty incredible. Uh, the names in gold here are our maintainers. These are the developers who have volunteered to take the lead on the development and maintenance of a software project for Odyssey. This is a really serious commitment of time and energy, so these folks deserve an extra special thank you. Let's give some applause. Um, and of course, we owe a massive thank you to the users of Odyssey software. There are some stats here from GitHub, where we store all of our source code, and from CRAN, a repository where some of our analytics packages are distributed. Over the years, thousands of people have subscribed to our code repositories, and hundreds of thousands have downloaded our software packages. Uh, so these are some really impressive stats, and I wanted to say thank you to everyone who's ever installed Odyssey software tools, posted questions on the forums, reported bugs, and requested new features. You're helping us improve our software every day, and more importantly, you're out there generating evidence for patients using these tools. Uh, to, so to take a step back for a second, what is open source? Open source software makes its source code free to access, use, modify, and redistribute. Often, as is the case in the Odyssey community, open source software is developed collaboratively by people across many different institutions. And these are generally people who either volunteer their own time or are paid by their employer to contribute to the project. I'll flag as well that this is a common and well-respected way of developing software. Lots of really widely used foundational software is open source. Python, R, Linux, Firefox, PostgreSQL, just to name a few. The technology industry today would look very, very different without open source software. All Odyssey so software is freely available on GitHub, and as of the last time I checked, we had 264 different code repositories there. These range from mature software tools with thousands of users to brand new experimental methods packages. The entire end-to-end -end process of running an observational research study can be accomplished using Odyssey open source software. From mapping source data into the OMOP common data model, to the CDM and standardized vocabularies themselves, to performing data quality diagnostics, to building patient cohorts, and to running a wide range of analytics from characterization to prediction. I wanted to talk a bit more about why Odyssey software is open source, and what an important role our software plays in the journey from data to evidence. The first thing is reproducibility. In order to consider a research study truly reproducible, other researchers must be able to do the exact same analysis that was done in the original study. And the best way to guarantee that this can happen is to share the analysis code that was used in the study. The fact that all of Odyssey's software is open source makes this possible. You can really reproduce the line-by-line -line code that was executed, and not just the high-level functions that were run, but the code that makes up those functions under the hood. Second, related to reproducibility, if we want to increase the trust of the public and of regulators in observational research, being open about how we came to our conclusions is really essential. With Odyssey open source software, we can show what we did at every step of the process. Third, Odyssey is on a mission to revolutionize the way that observational research is done. And we can only achieve this goal if we are working together across institutions and across disciplines and inviting anyone who's interested to contribute to our work. Finally, Odyssey is all about large-scale research, and by making it free to participate in Odyssey and to use our tools, we're not just expanding access to these incredible resources, but we're growing our potential to run some pretty massive research studies all together. So now that I've set the scene, I'm gonna dive into the updates on what the open source community has been up to over the past year. First, we have the open source community work group. This work group is led by Paul Nagy and Adam Black, and its mission is to promote the health and sustainability of the Odyssey open source software ecosystem. The open source work group is all about supporting Odyssey maintainers and contributors, and helping users and people new to Odyssey get more involved in our open source community. Some things the group achieved in 2023, uh, they put on the second annual Odyssey Developers Conference. 40 developers attended, and we had some great sessions like a presentation on open source development in the Darwin EU project, and a discussion about open source economics. 21 developers joined the 2023 Chiron Contributor Cohort, which is a program for onboarding new developers to the Odyssey open source ecosystem and helping them become regular contributors and maintainers. 
A small personal aside, I myself am a product of the 2022 Chiron cohort, um, and I can attest it's a really great way to get more involved in Odyssey and to grow as a developer. We'll be launching another cohort in spring 2024, and anyone can apply, so stay tuned if that sounds interesting to you. And the final big update is that Paul Naji and Lee Evans launched the Odyssey Technical Advisory Board. This is a new initiative I'm gonna talk about right now. The mission of the Odyssey Technical Advisory Board is to ensure the stability, security, supportability, and sustainability of Odyssey open source projects. This is a group of 14 representatives from across the Odyssey open source ecosystem. As you've heard so far today, Odyssey has a lot of software now, and a lot of users, and our software is being used in some really important research projects all around the world. We need to make sure our developers can, continu can continue to meet the demands of their growing user base, and the increasing scientific and regulatory scrutiny that comes with the large-scale critical path research Odyssey software is being used in. So the tab was formed to help with things like figuring out how to continue supporting a variety of database platforms across Odyssey, coming up with a reliable and scalable testing infrastructure, running software security reviews, and eventually being responsible for the release cycle of an official full-stack Odyssey software distribution. To help explain why we need a technical advisory board, I've got this cartoon from the webcomic XKCD. So we've got this stack of blocks here they've labeled all modern digital infrastructure. And then down here, we've got this tiny little piece holding everything up, a project some random person in Nebraska has been thanklessly maintaining since 2003. <laughs> this is definitely something that could happen to us in Odyssey, where there's some random Odyssey person holding up the whole stack of observational research blocks. I'm actually guessing there's one or two or a few people here today who might be able to relate to this little block right here. So the idea with the tab and the open source community work group is we don't want our developers to feel like they're alone toiling thanklessly under all of this weight. These groups exist to find and provide more resources, make it easier for new developers to get involved, and surround this random person with a bunch of other random people from our amazing global community. And I think this looks better. And finally, for my last slide, I've got some updates on the actual software we built this year. So in Hades, which is the core suite of Odyssey Analytics software and is led by Martin Schumi, there were 83 software releases, eight packages added to the Hades suite, and two Hades-wide software releases, which provide users a way to install the entire Hades suite all at once with all of its dependencies. This helps collaborators make sure they are all synced up on the same latest and greatest versions of our Hades software. The team also made major progress on strategists. This is a new framework for building Odyssey network studies. You'll be hearing a lot about it this weekend. Um, and in strategists, a study can essentially be assembled without writing any R code, thanks to a bunch of Hades models it's connected to under the hood. It's also a really nice, tidy way to share study packages and make sure studies are reproducible. Strategist is nearly ready for release as part of Hades, so stay tuned, and a big shout out to Anthony Senna, who is leading this project. Next, we have Broadsea. This is a project led by Lee Evans and Ajit Lande. Broadsea is a Dockerized version of the entire Odyssey software stack. And for folks who are able to use Docker, this really is the easiest way to install the Odyssey tools and to keep them up to date. The 3.0 release has a ton of improvements, um, like improved security and authentication, a more modular approach for spinning up apps, and some newly added apps like Ares and Perseus. If you want to learn more about Broadsea 3.0, go check out Ajit's demo today from 2.45 to 3 p.m. right here in the ballroom. And last but certainly not least, Chris Knoll released two, version 2.13 of Atlas, which is the cohort building and analytics tool that sits at the heart of our open source ecosystem. The latest version of Atlas has a new feature for managing tags for cohort definitions and concept sets, some cool new visualizations, several improvements to the concept set builder, and a lot more. And that's it for me. If you're interested in getting involved in Odyssey open source, we've got a great way for you to join the journey this weekend. The Hades work group is hosting a two-day hackathon, Saturday morning and Sunday afternoon. So come meet the team. It's gonna be a lot of fun and we hope to see a lot of you there. Thanks. Thank you, Katie. And now we have Peter Reinbeek. I always have to start doing this. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's really great uh, to be here and again give you an update on the European side of Odyssey. Um, and especially sharing with you the growth that we are establishing in, in Europe. Um, and that's done with a lot of people. 
Um, it was already mentioned by, uh, by George that the European Health Data and Evans Network project has been growing a large network uh, in Europe. And you can see on this slide uh, the number of applications of databases, uh, about 560 databases, that were interested in mapping their data in Europe to OMOP. So that's a huge number. And in Eden, we have awarded uh, financial support to databases. Uh, and we have selected 187 databases out of this, uh, this big pool of databases. And what you see here is the growth also within the individual countries, where in Spain there are 27 databases mapped to OMOP. Uh, many countries have a large number, and that creates very important opportunities for these, national, uh, for these nations. But what's also quite interesting is that beyond Eden, many other projects have been initiated or ongoing. And I would really like to invite you to have a look also at the Odyssey Europe website, where we are sharing uh, some links also to these, these larger projects. Especially, for example, in cancer space, there's a lot of nice work ongoing. Multiple projects that are looking at the registries and how to map them uh, to the open common data model. So the growth in the countries also initiated uh, the creation of national nodes. And for me, the national nodes is a little bit like a federated network of leadership. Uh, there are leaders stepping up uh, in, in Europe in individual countries. And that's because of the large amount of databases that are mapped, but also the large amount of interest of all kinds of different organizations in Europe that want to be part of, of the Odyssey mission. And uh, at the moment, this is the list of countries that have identified themselves and sent a letter to uh, Odyssey Europe. We want to be a node, and we start this node with this amount of organizations, with these databases, and we want to take leadership in our country to move uh, Odyssey further and, and work together on things like vocabulary mappings. Um, and at the Odyssey Europe Symposium uh, this year, we had a whole area where these nodes could present themselves. And this is an example of the Belgian team who, who made some Belgian beer with an Odyssey logo on it. That's always a good way to get into the community. Um, and there's more to come. Um, we already have requests from other countries as well. Uh, so I'm quite exciting. Uh, it's very exciting to see this, this growth. We also had our first uh, node leadership meeting where all the leadership of the individual countries came together uh, and we discussed uh, common issues and how we could collaborate on maybe instantiating some studies across the countries that are of interest to many, many people. So the next uh, Odyssey Europe Symposium is going to happen on June 1st uh, till the 3rd in, uh, in next year uh, at the uh, ship, uh, the SS Rotterdam in, in Rotterdam. And we, like, like last year, we switched the order. So in Europe, we first have the workshops, introduction workshops and all kinds of other sessions. And then at the last day, on the Monday, uh, we have uh, the symposium. And just to give you a short impression on, on this year's uh, symposium, uh, we had the largest number of attendees this, uh, so far. Um, an attrition of 10 people not showing up, I was very proud of that. Uh, and um, it was really a full house. What was really nice is that uh, one of my colleagues, uh, Renske, asked the audience in her presentation, how many people in the room are actually new to the Odyssey community? And could you please stand up if you were new? And it was really nice to see that half of the room st stood up. And I think this is something to be proud of for the whole community that we are getting this growth. Um, in this meeting, we had a lot of sessions, huge number of posters also this year, close to 90 uh, poster presentations, demos from the notes or presentations from the notes. And we also had two Blues Brothers. You may wonder what's that, but you may learn a little bit more about that tonight. Um, yeah, no pressure. Um, yeah, you see some pictures of, of the symposium. I, I think it's always very nice to see all these people coming together. And we have uh, really made an agenda where there was a lot of time for discussions and breakout. It was, most of the day was actually not presentations, but interactions in different sessions. Um, and also these courses with, uh, well, you see some pictures of Patrick speaking to a small group of uh, participants in these, uh, in these workshops. And that's uh, has proven to be very, very valuable. And I want to highlight uh, this one, uh, which was introduction to the Odyssey, uh, to the Odyssey in general, uh, which was very 
interesting and successful uh, large number of newcomers, the half of the room hopefully joined that, uh, that meeting, and uh, we are going to continue that, and it's also good to see it on the agenda here uh, in, in, in the US. Showcases, we divided them also in uh, standards, open source analytics, clinical application, methodological research. And what was also quite nice, uh, we had, um, we still will also have it next year, early investigator mentor meetings where new people in the community could sign up to speak to a person that's a more senior person in the community. And we reserved the room with some standing tables where these people could have one-to-one -one conversation uh, with, uh, with our leadership. And I think it's important because we have to grow young people to become the new leaders uh, in the large, uh, large future that, that OLC will have. We also um, presented on the Darwin U initiative. Uh, so Darwin U is building a federated network for the European Medicines Agency to answer questions for their committees. Um, and um, we, in this meeting, in this presentation, we also show that the current network uh, of the Darwin U uh, is built up of databases that are already on OMOP. Um, most of them were mapped to the uh, Eden project, but also other databases uh, have been added. And we are adding 10 more databases every year. We're in the process of onboarding 10 new databases now, and uh, that will be another 10 next year. So there will definitely also be an update on Darwin. And it's really great to see also the commitment of the European Medicines Agency to participate in these meetings as they were in the panel uh, last, uh, last meeting. <laughs> And then finally, if you are not on this picture yet and you want to be on the picture, come to, uh, to Europe. Uh, it's, it's really exciting to see you there. And I know many people are already coming, but we can have more people. So thank you very much for that. All right, thank you, Peter. And now we have Mornin Fang. Mornin. Good morning, everyone. Uh, in case we haven't met, my name happens to be Morning as well. So uh, good morning to you again for Morning. Okay, uh, yeah, I'm currently a assistant professor at the National University of Singapore. And more importantly, I now serve as the uh, chapter chair for the Singapore Odyssey uh, uh, chapter. And uh, today I'm really honored uh, to represent our uh, Odyssey Asia Pacific uh, community uh, to invite every one of you uh, to join us in our Odyssey Asia Pacific Symposium 2024. Uh, because we will be hosting the Apex Symposium 2024 in Singapore. Yeah! <laughs> thanks, 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 guys. Thanks, guys. Uh, may I have a show? How many of you ever watched this movie called Crazy Rich Asian? <laughs> wow, not bad, not bad. Okay, you watch the movie. Do you recall the scene that uh, for the bachelor party? Yeah, they actually renovate a. Uh, 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 a cargo boat as a as a as a party place, and then they uh, are sailing on the international water, and then they flew in all the gases through helicopter. That's gonna be exactly what will happen in Asia Pacific in Singapore. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, uh, um, yeah, yeah. That, that movie is a very nice movie. That there's nothing to do with actual Singapore life. Uh, <laughs> but nevertheless, uh, um, have you seen from the back, uh, background? Uh, we do have our uh, Marina Bay Sands, uh, the the fancier hotel in Singapore. Uh, we will work hard. Uh, we will raise enough sponsorship. Maybe, maybe uh, we could uh, host our event on a fake boat uh, on top of the uh, hotel, as, as you can see. Uh, but regardless, uh, if you join us in, in the Asia Pacific uh, 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 symposium, I, no matter what, I personally will buy all of you drinks up there uh, after the event. Uh, that's a promise. It's, it's on record. Okay, you can clip that <laughs> and claim. Uh, yeah, it's going to happen between 6th to uh, 9th uh, December. Uh, just before Christmas, uh, again, uh, if you are sick of uh, winter and the cold, uh, come to Singapore, uh, in, uh, enjoy the sunlight and heat. Uh, and and more, more importantly, uh, Singapore very presently, uh, we are kind of uh, at the location right in the middle of the Asian Pacific region, right? So uh, we hope that given that strategic location, uh, we can extract a bigger cloud uh, from our neighboring regions. And uh, we don't want to see that symposium as just a platform for Asia Pacific partition, uh, Odyssey practitioners to uh, uh, interact, but also we want it to be a platform to allow our uh, global practitioner to join us as well, so that we can learn from each other, uh, so that we can have more cross regional collaborations as well. Um, so for our program, uh, learning from from Peter, uh, we are starting uh, with, with a tutorial and hands-on workshop first, 
uh, well, last year, very nice Mui uh, and, and Song was joining us. Uh, it was great fun. Uh, we want that to warm up the event and also allow to, uh, uh, researchers, data scientists who are new to Odyssey to learn about it and, and to participate on the subsequent events. And on day two and day three, uh, we have quite ambitious uh, a goal. We want, to, uh, and, uh, we want to organize a data hackathon. Um, uh, what we plan to do is that on, on day one, uh, we want the teams to propose their own clinical problem statement and start uh, developing the data extractions and data analytics codes based on either the Singaporean data set or the Asia Pacific data set. On day two, we hope they can duplicate their studies to other international uh, data sites as well. Uh, it, it sounds quite crazy and quite ambitious. It keeps me up all night. Uh, um, yes, we, as you can see, uh, uh, we will going to need lots of help to make this successful. And if anyone interested to join us for this data hackathon, uh, uh, do approach us uh, uh, after uh, later on during the, the, the symposium or drop me online through email. We really need all the help to make it uh, happen. And after the data dawn, our final day, uh, yeah, that was the day I done last year. We organized, uh, uh, definitely everyone will, will be happy and build a lot of collaborations. And the last day, uh, we have a formal uh, symposium. We want to end the event with a huge blast. And, and more importantly, uh, we would like to invite the winners of the data hackathon to present uh, their findings, the preliminary findings uh, in, in the symposium uh, uh, also. Uh, again, uh, we'd like to offer them one more opportunity to share their idea to uh, both the global and a APEC uh, Odyssey uh, uh, practitioners, and also to receive critics, feedbacks, and suggestions uh, for their study. So uh, inspired by uh, George, uh, Patrick, Peter, we do our best to, to host it as a huge party and make it as exciting as, as possible. And, and in addition to that, uh, one thing that you will never get disappointed is the food in Singapore, right? So, so trust me. I know I'm biased, but this is an honest sentiment. Uh, we have beautiful food in Singapore. This is our national signature dish. It's the chili crab. Amazing for those uh, who love uh, uh, seafood. And of course, we have famous uh, chicken rice as well. And actually, since we are very near to all our neighboring countries, we have very authentic uh, uh, Japanese food, Korean food, Indian food, Malay food. Uh, and if you like fruit, then you have to pay respect to the king of fruits, which is durian. Right? If you haven't tried durian, it's either you love it to the max or you hate it to the bone. So <laughs> that is way, it's going to be interesting to find out. So, so with that, once again, uh, yeah, we'd like to invite all of you to join us uh, uh, between 6 to 9 December next year to the APEC Symposium. And one more time, my promise, if you join us, I'll personally buy you drinks on top of the Mary Bay Sands, <laughs> looking, over, looking over the night views and discuss about collaborations. So look forward to seeing you all there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Morton. I hope you put those two um, symposia on your calendars just, just now. All right, so here's our agenda. We've just finishing with the state of the community. Uh, pretty soon we'll be moving to the Odyssey Community Networking with Faiza and Cynthia. We'll be leading that in a moment. Uh, then we move to our plenary session, improving reliability and scale of case validation. So that's usually where we put forward, you know, some big scientific effort that we've carried out over the last year. We'll move to lunch, and then we have a panel on Odyssey Network Studies that I mentioned earlier, so we'll be putting that forward at 1 o'clock, and then followed by two sessions of collaboration. Uh, our first lightning talk session will be on data standards and methods research, followed by a poster demo session, and our second one, methods and clinical applications, again, followed by a poster demo session. And then we have our closing session at 5 o'clock run by uh, Patrick, and we will do our Titan Awards then, and we will do a group photo. So remember, we all want to be in that photo for next year that we show over the next year. So you want to be in that. Uh, that will be about six, um, six o'clock, followed by a networking exception, uh, reception and exhibits, and then a uh, new feature, Odyssey's Got Talent Woo! at seven o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, um, We will be announcing our Titan Award winners at the end of the day. But before we do that, this is my opportunity to congratulate all the nominees. These are nominees who are nominated by the community, who uh, were recognized for putting that effort to push Odyssey forward. And I would like everyone on this slide who is nominated for a Titan Award to stand. <laughs> Uh, 
All right, and congratulations to all of you. Uh, then on Saturday after breakfast, we'll begin with a morning session with tutorials, workgroup meetings, and a hackathon. And then lunch, and then we move into the how often large scale characterization workshop, which I talked about. You'll notice in the first session has no competing sessions. I hope everybody comes to that as we work together to um, generate characterization evidence. At five o'clock we end, so we don't have any evening sessions. We designed it so those of you who would like to go in, uh, well, to do whatever you want, including visit New York City, there's a bus, and in your materials you'll see there's a bus, just a short walk from the hotel that brings you all the way into Manhattan and back, or a short Uber ride to the trains that also bring you in and back, or a short drive, uh, if you'd like to do that. And uh, if you do happen to go, I suggest that you go to Times Square sometime around a quarter of the hour and just look up and you may see something interesting. So 45 past the hour, every hour on Saturday, um, that would be a good time if you wanted to do that. <laughs> Any, and, and we'll give you more details if there, because there's a lot of billboards, so maybe we'll, we'll help you out there. Then on Sunday, when you recover from that, uh, we come back a Sunday morning. We will continue our How Often uh, workshop, the second half of that. But in parallel, we're going to put the HL7 Fire OMOP Connectathon because that's an all-day event. And then in the afternoon, then, we have our chapter workshops, further workgroup meetings, hackathons, and the continuation of the con Connectathon. And we end at 5 p.m. Uh, so that will be our symposium. Uh, anyone who's new here, we hope that you, uh, now you've already kind of joined the journey. I hope you stay in the journey. Uh, let's see, uh, we will now move to our session and uh, Cynthia and Faiza will be coming up to run that session. Thank you so much.